Yeah, and they work, right? Yeah. Like they're entertaining, you watch the whole thing through. Like how many things on social do you watch two minutes of, three minutes of, like not many, right? I think average is like maybe eight seconds. Your age is probably like three seconds. Same with my age, I just like scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, so this changes, like back pain's boring, going to the office, uh, doctor's office is boring, but then how do you capture this huge audience that has the pain, that has, uh, could use the product, but you gotta capture them long enough to actually like get their interest going. No one ever like sparks interest and they're never gonna buy your product. So this quirky advertising is something that has worked from the beginning as well. It's not boring um, and people actually watch the video. So I think that uh, our marketing approach coupled with focusing on back pain, coupled with uh, um, just the I guess it's probably the, those two things, right? Our market, marketing approach and back pain, those two together. And a product really that works. actually works. Yeah. Something that's really cool is, I mean, yes, we're kind of, Kate says we were kind of gunslinging <laughs> from the beginning of just like, yeah, sure, this is great for back pain. But since then, we've had a ton of really awesome feedback. feedback. Like we, I think our sales kind of prove that they work and we have less than 2% return rate. So it's showing that really people love it. And on top of that, we've had physical therapists, chiropractors purchase it for their clinics, as well as recently a Yale professor just contacted us. And he specifically studies the spine, right? Yeah, he's like the top spinal specialist in the nation. Yeah, so. anyways, he contacted us to use the product, just to research it, study it out. And now he's had the whole Yale hospital um, stop, stop the wheels. his wheels, and he uses it with all of his clients. So it is kind of cool of how not only is it cool marketing, like, yeah, it's back pain, but no, we also have a product that. So with all the success, what led you guys to say, we got to get on Shark Tank, we need to even explore that avenue, and then what's it like being work, what's it like working with Lori? Um, so Shark Tank reached out to us, I'll drop some bombs about Shark Tank. Shark Tank reached out to us. Almost all the big companies that you see on Shark Tank, they're probably reached out to by Shark they, Tank. They have scouts. Yeah. Scout sports. Because they are uh, they want a variance of companies. I think they get 60,000 applications. And uh, I found that, I don't know, like winning a lottery, right? You, like your odds, you never count on it. Shark Tank's the same way. I applied twice before, but you're in a pile of 60,000 people. Um, same with like the Forbes 30 under 30 thing, like you're in a pile of like 50,000 people, like how do you hack these things? And I think if you put your head down and work really hard, they kind of hack themselves. And so like Forbes contacted me to apply. We still have to go through the application process, but to get on the list. And Shark Tank contacted me to apply. And we still have to go through the whole application process, but we're on the top of the pile. And so us putting our heads down and just working hard led to us being able to get 8 million impressions a day on social media, meaning it's going across 8 million screens a day. A day. And then that leads to... It's now finding one of those. Yeah, that apps. leads to more success, right? Uh, a really good athlete puts their head down, works really hard at what they do, and then they get picked up. It's not like they're lifting their head up and just like trying to find all the opportunities for them. Uh, success, uh, like people who wanna be, sponsor your business and help you grow, uh, are attracted by your success. Um, that Shark Tank process though, is a, it probably took 100 to 200 hours to apply, so it was really intense. Um, you never know if you're actually gonna air. Um, you never know if you're actually gonna film, then you find out you're gonna film, and then like 30% of people that film don't even air, so they'll film like 150, uh, 150 pitches or whatever, and only film like 90 in a season or something, or only air 90. Um, the strange yeah. part too is it was during COVID season, so it very much changed the experience for Kate. Oh yeah. <laughs> so normally they film in LA, but they switched it to Las Vegas, and then he also had to quarantine for ten days in a hotel room. Just oh, wow. <laughs> Not even allowed to get out and get ice. Had to stay in the hotel room. Yeah. Wow. Um, they brought us three meals a day. Yeah, at least How long was your actual minutes. pitch compared yeah. to yeah. the 10 minutes that we saw? So the actual pitch was about a little over an hour, and then they cut that down. Um, the music isn't playing when you walk down the hallway. 
uh, you walk into the tank and you they say hit your spot and it's a little uh, tape mark on the rug and you have to stand there for like 60 seconds and just smile and it's really awkward. There's this huge boom cam that comes over and they're getting all these shots and then the producer at the back of, of the room just yells, begin! And then you just like, you just begin your memorized pitch. They only really care about the first two minutes of like the memorized pitch part and then boom, it jumps into Q and A and everything, that's all unscripted. They don't care about any of that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Any other any questions? Yeah. Who's the guy with you? <laughs> that was Clayton. He's one of our employees. Um, we actually quarantined together in the Venetian <laughs> hotel, and it was me and him really ten cool. days. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. How did Shark Tank help us? Um. So the night of Shark Tank, we uh, did a million dollars in sales, and then the next day we did a million dollars in sales. You guys, like I. When I was your guys' age, I started a sh like a t-shirt company, just like uh, making these stencils and spray painting these t-shirts and I didn't sell them to anybody besides myself. <laughs> so like I really, and then we, then I went, uh, graduated high school, went on a mission, went to BYU for two years, started this company and it's like grown like crazy. So I, I, I obviously look older to you, I am older, but um, like hitting those, I'm only 28 and the million dollar days and stuff like that, like even when I started this business and I was in the business for a couple of years, that would like blow my mind that that was even possible. And now it's it's like, sweet, we got a million dollar day. Yeah, sweet, we got a million dollar day. I remember back in the, um, during the yoga time, um, he was just like, we were tight for money. We had a, some employees and we're like, can we even afford this? Like we've had a lot of days like this. And it was, he was just saying, if we can just do $5,000 a day, if we can just do that. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. <laughs> But comparatively now, like you look back and it's like now I'm hitting a million dollars a day. But I just remember like white knuckle just stress if we could just hit five thousand dollars a day. <laughs> but obviously that's business expense too. It doesn't all just come straight yeah. from the bank account. Yeah. But um, for the first three years of the business, Anna and I didn't pay ourselves a dime. We just uh, even after I mean the first two we did a couple hundred thousand and in that year three we did four million and we still hadn't paid ourselves a dime. Then our accountant was like, you have to pay yourself because the IRS is gonna flag you and they're gonna audit your, your numbers unless you're paying yourself a salary, right? You look sketchy if you're making that much money and then not paying yourself anything. We, but, for the past five years, we've lived in the same apartment, two bedrooms with two little kids and we've been, yeah, like right now we just bought our first home but we're still not in it because we're renovating it and we still try to keep things tight. And I think that's a big part of success is don't count your eggs hatched before, or what is the saying? Like, don't, don't count your eggs before they're hatched. Before they're hatched. So just really make sure that you're comfortable and you're really putting, that's been from the very start where you've always said, we really want to use this money and just put it back into the business and keep growing it. Because when we started out, we really wanted to do this not even for the money, it was more for the education. We just said, I just really want to try to create something that's successful and just learn from it. Like, I just, I just want the experience and want the connections I can yeah. yeah, I think living your age, not your wealth, is important. I also think um, dream big, but be fine to start small. Like seriously, I started this thing with sewer pipe, and uh, did I ever like? I didn't have the goal at the beginning to do the numbers that we're doing now because if I did, I never would have started it. Right? It was like, okay, this business is not going to be a hundred million dollar business. I was just trying to do, you know, just trying to make a little bit. What other questions? Yeah. Um, how did you learn to like start this business and grow it and market? Was it from school or experience or what? That is a great question. Um, yeah, I, I, I did some sales. I did a, one summer of summer sales before I started the business. Uh, but I think more than that, I grew up in Washington. My dad is in the farming industry, so I grew up farming. And when you're out there, you really have uh, and your and your equipment or whatever breaks down, you have one option, and that's well, you have two options. You can either sit there and wait for someone to come and waste a bunch of time, or you can fix the problem that you have. And literally, entrepreneurship is just problem fixing. That's it. So to start the business, like at the beginning, I was like, how do we cut up the sewer pipe? I'm just going to take the wheels off my skateboard and put them on this table saw. Uh, and then it was, uh, how do we make a better product, or how do we 
how, how do we market, right? We got kicked off of Amazon. What are we gonna do now? So then we started a website. Literally, for when we're making millions of dollars in sales in year three, I went on the Adobe Illustrator. I had made our website just in pictures. So imagine just making pictures of the entire site. I screenshotted those pictures. I uploaded them onto the website. And then if the picture had a button in the entire picture that needed to go somewhere else, I would just hyperlink that entire picture to the next page. Like that's how ghetto we were rolling. Like it was like, it was literally like do whatever we can to, to like make it work, right? And be successful. So being scrappy and just trying to uh, just solve the problem uh, is, I feel like the core, uh, that's the core thing you have to do at the beginning. You just have to keep solving.